The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. Before we join Jerry Corsi, last night the State of the Union speech, and he starts talking about the barkeep, and he swings into how he was raised by a single mother, and that was at the beginning of the speech, and I sat straight up. If you would. I'm the son of the barkeep, the Speaker of the House. How the son of a single mom can be president of the greatest nation on earth. Wow. Well, ladies and gentlemen, please say good morning. And again, I have this handful of people who have made this radio show what it is and been made this show successful. Uh, PhD, Dr. Jerry Corsi, Harvard PhD, writer, investigative reporter, longtime friend. And uh, we are going to talk about a couple of different things. But I, with you right there right now, when I heard that, that really is even a slap in the face of his own official story of being two and a half or, you know, two and three quarters and going to the airport to say goodbye to daddy. So according to the official story, he's not raised by a single mother until, what, he's two and a half, pushing three, Jerry? That's right. And I, I was floored by it, too. I mean, <laughs> Barack Obama reinvents his biography on the moment. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, just, you know, suddenly what happened to the... Uh, the Kenyan Obama, he, they just kind of dropped him out. Yeah. Uh, of course, you know, Obama's, he, look, Obama says, you know, he's okay, now a single mom, so he now admits the parents weren't married yeah. and that they never lived together. That's what the INS said. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Obama told his publicist for years that he was born in Kenya and had brochures mm-hmm. published to, mm-hmm. uh, to advertise his books. Yeah. Saying I, Kenyan-born Barack Obama. I, I was thinking, and I, I was you know, I'm not any good at this, but I was trying to timeline it. So how old is Barack, forget about a last name, when Stanley Ann, forget about a last name, meets Lolo Sotero? Well, he, he's, you know, by four years old, they're headed to Indonesia. So he must have been in right. maybe three years old. All right. When, yeah, right about three years old, probably. Right. So there's no single mother then either. She's now married. She got married again. She was, yeah, right, exactly. I mean, the, the truth is, and Obama, you know, in one of his moments in Dreams of My Father uh, where he's lucid, he says they can't find, he never found a marriage certificate for uh, his mother and the Kenyan. Nobody's ever found that marriage certificate. The INS, the Immigration Naturalization Service, in 1961 said there is no evidence that Barack Obama Sr. and Ann Dunham were married. Uh, they did not believe this was Barack Obama Sr.'s child and that they were going to contest it if the, oh, the Kenyan but, tried to use this as an excuse yeah. to extend his visa stay. So the, 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 um, now, so far, he is never without a father. Then at, right. at one point, I guess, and maybe we'll never know, Stanley Ann, for whatever reasons, doesn't want him with her in Jakarta. And that leads into that Sui Baka moment. Yes. Uh-huh. And, and they, in essence, ship him. I think he's eight, seven or eight. And they ship him yeah, maybe, back. Maybe not even that old. Okay, fair uh, enough. All right, fair enough. Yeah, and they ship him alone on an airplane back to, from for, Indonesia. To Gramps and Toot. To Hawaii, where, he's be, where he moves in and starts being raised by his grandparents. Yeah, So, and they send him to perhaps the most exclusive private school in Hawaii. Yeah, it goes to Puna, who nobody really knows how they pay for it. That's one of the great suppressed, mysteries in this family. Suppressed, but take it that far, I don't see being raised by a single mother in any part of that, what was said he last night. He wasn't, because, you know, Ann Dunham had divorced, supposedly, and, mm-hmm. you know, the divorce papers, there, of course, people do divorce people they're not married Exactly. To. I mean, happens all common time. law marriages, right. there's other reasons yeah. to get it on the on the books that you're not married to this person. Yeah. And the divorce with Obama Sr. and then the marriage to Lolo Satoro and Ann Dunham's life occur very close together. So there's really no period of time when Barack Obama's raised by a single mom. Yeah. Yeah. 
He's Remember? raised by grandparents, yes. Mm -hmm. Grandparents alone raised him a lot. Yeah, they were really and taking him to see Frank Marshall Davis and you know that uh, by single mom and I'm when I saw that last night and I went what's this yeah, all about I, I couldn't figure it out either why he went back to this raised by a single mom story uh, you know when his, he said in there is Barack Hussein Obama and that's the name of the African and he's just forgotten about him of course mm -hmm. you know Barack Hussein Obama the Kenyan neglected to mention the son on many of his visa applications so oh, yeah. you know it's like these two really had zero relationship with each other sure. and I think biologically and when you take a look at the evidence the the likelihood you know, he doesn't look anything at all like the Kenyan mm -mm. looks much more Indonesian than he does anything else or and, or fill in the blank uh, fill in the blank I mean this is the part of the problem is I've always said that there is some deep birth mystery here in this Agreed. family. Some, Agreed. Something that was so horrible or terrible or needed to be covered up that the lies we get look like a mm -hmm. intelligent disinformation story. Right. I mean, I, I, last night, really, I mean, I settled in and, um, you know, down on, I'm laying on my couch. I got my cat with me, and that was just the opening line. And, and I went, I sat up, and I thought, <laughs> right. Wow. You know, well, you know, and it's missed by everybody except for idiots like you and I. But I thought, well, that's a change in the story. Well, you know, actually, uh, Peter, one of the earlier shows I did this morning, a radio show, uh, mentioned it as well. So oh, it was good. caught pretty generally okay. across the country. Right. Again, Barack, Barack Obama, because I, I pointed out continuously that Barack Obama fabricates his past for right. his convenience. Oh yeah, no, I agree. Now at we, the time, now as you have done this wonderful work and. Others have done all this all this great work, and Jason Kistner, and of course Nick Chase, and the amount of people now joining the investigative movement just exponentially grows larger. And right, we, yeah. we got we got to this point where the, I mean, it's it's the broken record, but you, I don't know, two and a half, three years ago, maybe greater, when you were in Hawaii and you said, "Hey, Peter, there's another name here, Sui Barka," and, right. and I I just I mean, you guys couldn't if you guys weren't part of the show then. The things that were said about Jerry were unbelievable, and now, of course, the paperwork's there, and that name does appear. But now, the release of the Obama long-form birth certificate came in 2011, and I think a lot of that was kicked over because Donald Trump, uh, at the time, was thinking about running for president, and and uh, he was um, raising the birther issue, and he was called crazy. And remember and, all the nasty. And also, things. I had a book coming out, and right, you had in the next month. That's right, and you had the book coming out. And the whole idea was gaining right. traction. Of course. So, and then so here comes this state health director who releases a long-form birth certificate that's really released on a PDF. You never see paperwork. You get a PDF, a commercial private sector attorney, a woman, on a night flight out of Hawaii, brings this PDF that in a very surprised moment, Barack Obama shows it to America. And it was enough for, I remember Mike Litwin, I remember all the, all the Post and Rocky Mountain News people and Channel 9 people and everybody, here it is, the answer to everything. And, of course, that's where it says fathers, race, African, and all the other crazy stuff. And my personal belief, and I'll turn it over to you to talk about this Loretta Fuddy's death, is this birth certificate was manufactured in Washington, D.C. by the guy that I call Jimmy Down the Hall. And, uh, and it was never, the Hawaii thing was another... Just a mask. It was a plane ride. So um, here we go. So now talk about Loretta Fuddy, if you would, Doctor. And, and also I think Robert Bauer, the attorney from Perkins and yes. Coy, who is up in Seattle, played a big role. He was in the White House. He is one of the fixers of this Obama birth lie from the very beginning. Uh, when Fuddy came into the uh, Department of Health and certified this was Obama's birth certificate without showing the originals, we've still never seen original 1961 birth documents for Obama. And then she dies in this plane crash. Well, we find out a couple things. One, uh, Loretta Fuddy's family does not believe she died a natural death because she had no history of heart ailments. Uh, she got out of the airplane that went down into the water. She had a life uh, vest on. The, the trauma of the incident was largely, you know, in, over the plane it was down and people were still alive. They got out. 
And it was when they got out and she's floating there, holding the hands of her co-worker, that she suddenly drifts away. Well, the, the family does not believe that that was a natural mm -hmm. cause. Uh, secondly, um, you know, the whole investigation into, into who Fuddy was, then this Subud, you know, S-U-B-U-D group mm -hmm. services, which I had never heard of before, except that the Subud organization, which is a mystical Indonesian religion of a very small number of people, about 20,000 people worldwide, into this meditation contact with God kind of um, belief. And, and Fuddy was evidently the in Bellevue, Washington, the head of the Subud, uh, and was also a practicing member in Honolulu, going back at least to 2000, because there's newspaper articles showing her picture meditating at Subud meetings. And then we get a look, so I started investigating who the Sabud is, and it turns out Sabud is a guy from Indonesia who also changed his name about six times and um, looks identical to Barack Obama. You put the two pictures of the young Sabud next to Barack Obama, they're like twins. And, you know, you map one face onto the other, the dimensions fit exactly. It's shocking, actually. Now, I don't have a clue yet what this means. But I know that Barack Obama was going back into Indonesia as a child with his mother bringing him in for Lolo Satoro. They were living in the royal section of Indonesia. They came in in 1965, which is right you know, at the heart of this coup between Suharto, who's Muslim, killing, you know, getting rid of Sukarno, who is Christian, killing maybe half a million Christians and communists in the PKI, and Obama just, you know, blithely comes in and goes to school. Well, the schools he was going to at that time, he had to be registered as an Indonesian citizen. And he was taking, he, he was being registered even in a Catholic school as a Muslim because he was taking Islamic instruction, which he also lied about in 2008 running for president. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. <laughs> 